A key skill you need in IELTS speaking is being able to compare and contrast things, places, uh, people and activities and ideas. <laughs> it can be quite complicated, but I'm going to make it super easy for you. Let's do it. Hi, this is Keith and I run the website The Keith Speaking Academy and also the YouTube channel here, English Speaking Success. Now, comparing and contrasting. You know, in IELTS Speaking Part 1, you may be asked to directly compare two things, A and B, right? For example, travelling by car and travelling by plane. In Part 3 of IELTS Speaking, you will probably need to compare more abstract ideas like the past and the future or the future and the present. You may also have to compare opinions you've given or examples that you've shown. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to do that confidently. Let's begin, first of all, talking about comparing. And we're going to discuss how we compare people, places, activities and things. Okay. Um, a common question, though, students ask is, um, what exactly is the difference between compare and contrast? Well, it's a good question, right? Comparing generally means finding the similarities between two things, right? I compare you to a summer's day. It means I liken you to a summer's day. I'm making you similar to a summer's day. Very poetic. Contrasting, though, is finding the differences between things. So let's focus, first of all, on comparing, right? Now, the easiest way here to do this is to use the expression A is similar to B. In context, we may also say a is similar to B because do, 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 do. Or A is similar to B in that da, 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 da. For example, if we're talking about places, right, let's say London and Paris. London is similar to Paris because they are both capital cities. Right. London is similar to Paris in that they are both capital cities. Okay. Notice is similar to, the to becomes a t because we're stressing the nouns. London is similar, stress similar as well. London is similar to Paris. Paris is similar to London because we're stressing the nouns and the adjectives. London is similar to Paris, t to Paris. Try London is similar to Paris. Nice. London is similar to Paris because they are both capital cities. Very nice. Good. You've got that nice cadence. Lovely. Remember also, we can be using adverbs, right, to quantify how similar. Is it very similar or just a little similar, right? London is really similar or it's pretty similar. It's rather similar. It's quite similar to Paris. Adverbs really add some extra richness to your answers. Another way to express similarity is to mention both A and B first and then give a kind of summarizing phrase, right? So if we're exam if if for example we're comparing cars and brands of cars, we could say, right, when it comes to cars, two of the most famous brands in the world are Audi and BMW. And they are so alike. Or and they are pretty much alike. Or and they have a lot in common. Or and they are really similar. In addition, we can also use this structure to show likeness. A is as blah, 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 as B, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> A is 
as m as b and the as becomes us for example an audi is as reliable as a bmw as reliable as say that as reliable as an audi is as reliable as a bmw nice paris is as big as london John is as tall as Michael. Fantastic. Remember as well, we can also put those adverbs in to show how much they are similar, right? Or not. Paris is almost as big as London. John is nearly as tall as Michael. Okay, again, adverbs adding richness to your language. Finally, if the two things are actually not similar, but actually, <laughs> a lot of actuallys. Finally, if the two things are not only similar, but actually the same, we could say A is identical to B. A is identical to, to B. Or A is the same as B. Same as, same as. A is the same as B. So, for example, if we're talking about people, let's say, Jack is identical to his father. They both love football. Jack is the same as his father. They both love football. Another common phrase is just like. Jack is just like his father. Just like his father. Or if they actually look the same, physical appearance, right? A nice expression is, Jack is the spitting image of his father. The spitting image or the spitting image, if you have <laughs> Southern English pronunciation. Jack is the spitting image of his father, the spitting image of his father. They look just the same. Did you know I am actually the spitting image of my father. <laughs> Great, let's move on. Wonderful. So we've looked at comparing. Now let's look at contrasting. Again, we're going to be looking at how we contrast places, people, things, right? So probably the most straightforward and the simplest way is to say A is different from B. Notice, different from. Right, we had similar to, different from. A is different from B. Um, A is different from B because, or A is different from B in that it, right? For example, let's talk about my hometown, Manchester, and let's say Paris in France, right? We could say Manchester is different from Paris because it's much more industrial. Or Manchester is different from Paris in that the climate is colder than Paris. You can omit the, the last than Paris if you want, but if you want to put it together, it's colder. The climate is colder than Paris. You could also put it. So Manchester um, is different from Paris in that the climate is colder. Nice. And do remember, again, you can add adverbs, right, to show the intensity of the difference, right? Um, Manchester is really different from Paris, or Manchester is totally different from Paris. If you want to impress the examiner, um, I think it's strikingly different. Or <laughs> I think it's distinctly different, actually. If the difference is small, you can say, well, it's slightly different. It's rather different. Um, it's subtly different. That's nice. Manchester is subtly different from Paris in that the climate is slightly colder. I love adverbs. They're great. <laughs> OK, let's move on. Right, now in this next section, I'm going to stick with 
contrasting, but we're going to look at some idiomatic expressions to, to use um, to show contrast. So again, if we're talking about two things or people or places, we can use all of these. For example, we may say, well, they are worlds apart, right? London and New Delhi, they are worlds apart. Now, it doesn't mean they're on the opposite side of the world. It just means they're very different. So I could say Manchester and London are worlds apart or they are poles apart. The pole being the North Pole and the South Pole of the planet. They are poles apart, right? My brother and my sister, they're poles apart. Completely different. Um, like chalk and cheese. Chalk and cheese is only used for people, right? My brother and sister, they're like chalk and cheese. Very different. Another expression is A is a far cry from B, right? Um, Manchester is a far cry from Paris. They're very different in that. And then you give the, the reason why. Another one. A is in a different league from B. Manchester United are in a different league from Real Madrid, <laughs> are they? You're going to say, of course they are, Keith. One's in the Premier League, one's in the... Uh, the, uh, what, uh, the what? I'm not a football fan. I mean, one's in the Premier League and one's in the Spanish League. No, it's idiomatic. It just means they're different, right? I could talk about two authors, right? Stephen King is much better than Enid Blyton. Stephen King is in a different league from Enid Blyton, for example. Also, we can just use far or way. A is far blank than B. Or A is way blank than B, right? Stephen King is far better than Enid Blyton. Manchester United are way better than Real Madrid. Don't tell the people in Spain I said that. It's actually not true. Well, is it true? No, it's probably not true, right? <clears throat> anyway, some interesting idiomatic expressions you can use for contrasting things that are very different. Let's move on. Now, we have looked at comparing and contrasting things, places, uh, people. Now, I want to look at connectors and linking words that can be used to compare and contrast ideas. And that can be really useful in part three of IELTS speaking, right? So we can look at, for example, to compare similarly and likewise. For example, I love football. Similarly, I'm a big fan of basketball too. Or I love Chinese food. Likewise, I'm really into Vietnamese food too. When it comes to contrasting, we can use on the contrary, conversely, on the other hand. For example, I'm really busy during the week, um, but on the weekend, conversely, I have lots of free time. Mm. Notice here in speaking, the word order is often a little different from writing, right? When speaking, we often have the first noun, the second noun, and then the adverb, and then the sentence, right? Notice I said, I'm really busy during the week, it's the first noun, but on the weekend, it's the second noun, conversely, adverb, I have lots of free time. So that noun, noun, adverb, and then the end of the phrase. Look at the other examples. Well, I'm really busy on Mondays. Um, Fridays, on the contrary, are much easier. Can you see? I'm busy this week, actually. Um, next week, on the other hand, I have much less work to do, right? Can you see that pattern? That is much more a speaking pattern rather than a writing one. That's it. Interesting and beautiful ways to compare and contrast people, places, things, and ideas. In fact, anything you want at all. 
<laughs> Listen, if you enjoyed this video, I think you might like my online course, IELTS Speaking Success, Get a Band 7 Plus. It's a complete preparation course to get you ready for the IELTS speaking test. It's fun and professional. Fun because I believe that when you enjoy learning, the learning is deeper. And also, I believe it will help you not only become a better English student, but a better English speaker. If that sounds good to you, go and check it out. There's a link below. Um, it's on discount at the moment, so you can get a great deal. Um, check it out. If it's right for you, don't hesitate. Great. Listen, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. Do remember to subscribe, turn on the notifications, and I can't wait to see you again very, very soon. Take care, my friend. Bye-bye.